This is the Dave and Checky Show. We got this groovy podcast for ya. Reviewing crazy tunes or quoting Twain and Sting and Doom. We'll bring ideas to share like bonus points for extra flair because it's the freaking Dave and Checky Show. Check your show, we're bringing you this groovy review. We might preview movies, bake some bread, or drink some smoothies. So come on, have way too much caffeine. You roll up some rivers, I'll reference some raffy. This is the Dave and Checky Show. Poop. What do you think of that? I, I, I don't think much of it. That's a less is more attitude. Is it? Yeah, it's my new approach. Less is more. I see. Poop. All right. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's the first word of the new year was poop. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. The second word, I can't remember what it was. Uh, look, this is our 100th episode, so I thought you were going to say something, uh, I don't know, fitting for ah, our 100th yes. episode. Well, that's why I did the opposite. I <laughs> went poop. Yes, I see that. But let me tell you something. Uh-huh. I was going to do this. Welcome to Roberto Benini's House of a Thousand Paninis. Okay. Uh, Would you like to try one? Okay. How about ten? Times ten. Why times a hundred. Okay. Let's push the mic back Whoa. just a bit. Roberto is very mic friendly. <laughs> Roberto is is making love to the mic. Okay. All right. So I don't know what you're talking about. Um, uh, it's my new approach. I'm offering paninis to the world. Oh, all right. Feed the world with Roberto Benini's panini. Excellent. Man, that could, could sound X-rated in the wrong company. Mm. But again, anything could, like pizza. Uh-huh, there you go. Um, okay, enough of that. Anyway, uh, welcome everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 100 of the Middle-Aged Cool Kids Super Terrific Podcast featuring your pals... Okay, and uh, Dave and Shecky, and I just want to say that uh, we have done podcasts a few times in the past. Uh, we did one in, I think, 2004, and then we we switched it up in 2006. Yeah, we did podcasts back then. We, we, we did podcasts before YouTube was around, all right? We did podcasts. Take I'll just say this. We did podcasts when there were so few podcasts that ours was very popular. <laughs> Because there was so few podcasts, um, we just had a ton of listeners, and uh, we squandered that by giving up. But we've never gotten to a hundred episodes before. Uh, this is this is the podcast that has lasted the longest. We take breaks here and there, um, probably more than we should, but uh, we're still going strong at episode one hundred. Unless I'm going to give you the opportunity to end it now. At 100. Is that what you'd like to do? Uh, We would have had to have ended it at 99. You can't end it at 100. End it at the end of the 100th episode. Uh, That's unacceptable. All right. Excellent. Is it 1 through 99, 100 through I don't know what? Mm. Okay, I get it. So uh, as uh, I wanted to do a different kind of episode today, but uh, we couldn't get our shit together, so instead I'm presenting you with... Conspiracies, Unsolved Mysteries, and Deep Dark Secrets, installment number eight. Can't wait for number nine. Well, then I can do that real cliched Beatles thing again. Oh, you do it a little too much. Okay. Uh, so, if you've never listened to this show before, I never have. Okay, I know, I know that. And that's true. If you've never listened to the show before, welcome, welcome, welcome. But if you have, you know that I have a one conspiracy, one unsolved mystery, and one deep dark secret. And I let Dave pick the order of these, uh, uh, of wh- whichever he wants to go with. All right, let's start off with Joe Walsh. He is neither a conspiracy, an unsolved mystery, or a deep dark secret. He is just Joe Walsh, analog man. God damn it. Well, then let's try Don Henley. He's usually in one of these categories. He d- 
did star in our first ever version of Conspiracies, Unsolved Mysteries, and Deep Dark Secrets. And that episode was so popular, in fact, that is why we continue to do them. Don Henley featured prominently in that number one uh, conspiracy show. So, yeah. How many fucking years ago was that? And it still hasn't come true. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, it was... It, it, no, no. Wait a second. I will yeah. say this. The part about him is 100% true. Well, nothing's come of it. Nothing's come of it. There was a uh, there was supposedly a lady who had written a book about it. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if she ever is going to write the book or if someone has snuffed her out. We don't know. We're still waiting. It's been a couple of years. That's for sure. Bitch, got to write the book. All right, Dave. All right. I would like you to pick whether it's going to be a conspiracy, an unsolved mystery, or a deep dark secret that we start with today. Well, let's do a conspiracy. Conspiracy. All right. This is a good one. Conspiracy. Hold on to your hats. I will ask you if you have ever heard of Lena Morgana. Lena Morgana. That sounds like the wife of a gangster. She was not the wife of a gangster. That's why we haven't heard of her. I am right now showing Dave a picture of Lena Morgana. All right. Lena was born in January of 1989 and was a beautiful, bright, rising star with a voice and personality like no other singer or songwriter. She created an amazing collection of songs in her short time with us with breathtaking ballads and insightful lyrics that surpassed these young women's years. She created music that most artists can only dream of. Uh... So that's Lena Morgana. You see a, a picture here at lenamorgana.com. She's absolutely lovely, a very exotic, lovely looking young lady. And now we have the conspiracy from crisisforums.org. Lena Morgana versus Lady Gaga. One dies, the other suddenly becomes oh, a star. I heard of this girl. She was a background singer for the Lady Gaga. Actually, it's exactly the opposite. Right. She was not the background. She was the front round singer. Lady Gaga was the background singer. Oh, and she stole all her moves. She got all her tones and all her things from this woman. She got her looks her specifically crazy wigs and costume changes. Really, tell that to fucking Dale Basio. Look, compare the look of, of her to this woman and then compare I, the look of her to Dale Basio and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, that's fine, but this is clearly a Lady Gaga and Lena Morgana thing only. That's right. it. <clears throat> From the administrator of crisisforums.org. Yeah. I just came across this today. What the hell is that? It's just a forum. There are forums all over the internet. All right. I just came across this today, and I don't know if everyone is familiar with the story, but just in case anyone isn't, I'll list the important points here. Lena Morgana was a massively talented rising teen star. Stephanie, Lady Gaga, met her and was apparently to become her backup dancer or take on some other lesser role. Lena, according to eyewitnesses, was happy and dancing on the roof of a hotel or building of some sort, then around lunch, hurled herself off of it to her death. Two weeks later, Lady Gaga starts her meteoric rise. Nearly all the styles Lady Gaga uses today stem from Lena's own style. Why did, uh, why couldn't the two of these people exist? You think the world cares if, if she's an originator or not? I think that Lady Gaga, uh, we have seen her in videos and photos where she does spirit cooking and all sorts of weird ritualistic bullshit. So you know what? I don't put anything past Lady Gaga. I'm sorry. Maybe if I hadn't seen the spirit cooking in that video uh, from that documentary where she's running around naked in the, in the forest doing weird shit... Maybe I would be like, no, she's just a regular person. I but, didn't say she's a regular person, but it doesn't mean that she pushed someone off, a, off, off of a uh, ledge. It doesn't necessarily mean it, but it certainly could mean it. Don't you think they would prove that if they could? 
Anyway, I wanted to mention all this because of how weird it is, and also because of the satanic Illuminati MK Ultra stories floating around regarding Lady Gaga. I don't usually buy into this stuff, but I'm becoming a firmer believer by the day that specific individuals are planted for specific reasons to further specific messages. After discovering that the CIA paid abstract artist Jackson Pollock to advance his art so as to suppress social realism, which raised questions about society, I've taken a keen interest in how art is used as propaganda. I thought this strange, strange story fit into the picture. Who is this talking? This is the administrator of the crisisforums.org from 2013. I tried to look into more about Lena and only heard about this after reading a story about how her mother is desperately trying to tell everyone and anyone that her daughter was murdered and that former friend Stephanie basically stole her very existence. I was going to go to Lena's Wikipedia page to glean more details about the circumstances surrounding her death, but it's been deleted. I honestly don't know what's going on here, but it seems there were... There was some sort of effort at least to remove the story from newspapers about her death. I don't even know Stephanie had this friend until I just stumbled upon all of this today. But the weirdest part of all is probably Lady Gaga's video for paparazzi in which she is dropped over the side of a building's edge by a man. So, I am willing to... Uh, Put this in the okay, maybe category. You're not, you're not into it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. There are. Oh, first of all, I'd like to know more about this Lena Morgana, and was she on any prescription drugs for depression, for instance? Was she a manic depressive? Was that an issue, or have we not bothered to look into that? Do you have any previous episodes? She was just happy dead go lucky, like they say. Yes, she, she was. She doesn't look happy go lucky to me. She looks dark. She's got a dark side. She is a character. You're looking at someone who is a just a 19 year old girl. I don't know. I don't. That does that's fine. She could be 19, but she could have been suicidal. I don't know what she was. Let's at least establish that before we just do. You know. Look, I hate Lady Gaga. I've never liked her. I've always hated her. But I don't know what she's done. And quite frankly, that actually makes more sense. It would be someone in charge of her. Like management, not her. So so somebody who had... So, uh, you know, I'll give was... you that. The man dropping a girl over the side of the ledge. You know, that, you know that's conceivable. I, I honestly feel that Lady Gaga's rise is coincidental timing wise and I don't personally I don't see very much of a connection between the two of them in terms of their looks I don't see I don't see how they look alike at all did this chick play piano I will say that Lena Morgana's Wikipedia page still missing well maybe she hasn't been able to write it no you know who's gonna write her Wikipedia page there's no money behind there anymore it doesn't matter. Just people die. Their Wikipedia pages doesn't disappear. So someone put it up. Someone already has tried to put it up, and it's been taken down repeatedly. Well, put it up again. How do we know that she hasn't? What's to gain? That, does, this, that doesn't make any sense. What? What's to gain from her not having a Wikipedia page? It sounds like someone has paid to keep it off. We know that Wikipedia is heavily influenced by uh, government people. People have uh, the anonymous uh, login information, and they go in there, and they, comp they change shit up all the time. All right. Uh, years ago, I did a documentary about a forum called Gen May, and... Uh, they also had the same problem with Wikipedia. Somebody on Wikipedia didn't want anything about that particular forum uh, on Wikipedia. And every time someone tried to change it, it would come down. And this was 2007, 2008. So uh, 
I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Wikipedia is sus a lot of the time. It's possible. So you're, you're just not going to buy this? Not until I find out a little more about her background. Well, I, I unfortunately cannot tell you anything about her from, uh, from Wikipedia because it's been wiped off. There's a lot of... Uh, Who was your father? What did he do to her? I don't... I have no idea. See, we don't know all these things. This is what you need to know before well, you put a crime on we would need to know someone. it. We would need to know it, but why is it not on Wikipedia? I don't know why it's not on Wikipedia, but let's not... You know, I don't know. This is what I'm saying. I can't... I can't back it because there's too many unknowns. I don't like Lady Gaga, that's for sure. Lena Morgana... This is from Earth... I'm sorry, earnthenecklace.com. I don't know what that means. Uh, Lena Morgana's suicide occurred when she was 19, according to her mother. Her now deceased daughter made Lady Gaga into the powerhouse we know her to be today. That sounds like her mom's delusional. Yana, I guess that's Lena's mom, wanted the rights to the songs that Lena and Lady Gaga recorded together. Did oh, she? Just so you know, I think mm -hmm. they recorded like 12 songs together. Well, what does she want the rights for? Is she going to hang it on her wall or does she want a bank account? Uh, Lena's mother or Lena's manager claimed they recorded at least 12 songs together. However, back in 2010, Yana blamed Lady Gaga for stealing her daughter's style and performance techniques. The accusation came shortly after a Vogue cover story that the Born This Way singer did in Raw Meat. Well, well uh, for, uh, yeah, let's hear some Lena Magana. Uh, Lena Morgani. Lena, okay. Let's hear some Lana Magana. Okay. You ready? So, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No good boys ever go to heaven.
Well, that clearly sounds nothing like her. No, just kidding. That that does sound like you could say that sounds like Lady Gaga, but you could also sound it says it sounds say it sounds like a lot of uh, female singers. It sounds a lot like Lady Gaga. Could sound like Gwen Stefani, and it also could sound a little like Britney Spears if you told me. If you said she was influenced by Britney Spears, it's oh okay, I hear that. So maybe, maybe. Sounds like Lady Gaga, but that doesn't sound... That's somewhat generic. I guess. I, guess I, I hear that, and I hear the, uh, the, the tone and the, the, the cadence and oh. the... Uh, who's producing her and who's producing Lady Gaga? Well, that I don't know. I don't know if Lady Gaga had the same producer, but they... It's that, it's that, that Dr. Luke guy. Lady Gaga is in the song. She it's has that Luke guy. He's up to no good. It's no, it's no, it's no, it's nothing like that. It's just like a local dude. But uh, this local dude's a troublemaker, a devil worshiper. I mean, all I can say is that there's. I think there there could be something here. As far as her being murdered, there's just no reason for her to be exercising and and you know doing her daily routines and. Laughing and smiling, and then just jumping to her death. Well, who said that's exactly what happened? Well, people saw her. People witnessed her doing her, you know, doing exercises. She's very fit. So they witnessed her jump off the roof. They didn't witness her jump off the roof. I think they witnessed her maybe falling, but I don't know if someone saw her jump or someone saw her thrown. Yeah, sounds like they jump into... Conclusions to say that she was up there having an exercise session. Who knows what she was doing up there if no one was up there with her? Well, I mean that could be that could be, but she ha- she had what's she be- doing on the roof in the first place? She had been appearing in a whole bunch of different uh, rooftops. No, oh. she's been appearing on television. Everybody, put your hands together for CJ. <laughs> what up, CJ? What up? Welcome to New Rock. Let's roll it out. Do you think it would be cool to kind of date a musician? I think it'd be awesome. I'm yeah. uh, looking for someone who can introduce me to different types of music. Uh, I'd like to go to an underground show that is underground and maybe a band that no one's heard of. Great. Well, hopefully you can find one of these girls today because these girls could wind up being the Beyonce to your Jay-Z. Lena, last but not least, is a 19-year-old singer. She's been singing since she was five years old and she's into pop and rock music. What do you think about your competition over here? Well, I'm pretty. I'm a nice person. I can sing. I'm talented. And if he's looking for a a good girl. That would be me. What's her question? Which of these artists would you want to have a one-night stand with and why? Oh. Um, I'm not into one-night stands. I have to know the person to do something like that. So, no one. Sorry. You know, that's a, that's I a good that. answer. I respect, I respect that. That's a good answer. Okay. So, it's now time for the big moment we've all been waiting for. CJ. Who's the lucky winner? <laughs> Tough choice. Um, she's kept me interested from the beginning. I think I still need to see a little bit more. And I'm going to go with Lena. Lena! <laughs> wow! Everybody make some noise for Lena! Uh, she was also appearing on uh, like Russian television. She did a lot of songs that she also put into Spanish. She was... Dude, this girl was, she was on her way. No There's one no has, doubt. no one has said that this death was uh, suspicious at Dude, the time. You, if you remember back to the forum post I, re- I, I read to you, mm-hmm. shit has been wiped off the internet. Not only her Wikipedia, but all, any news story about her jumping or her dying has also been scrubbed from the internet. Well, how much was there in the first place? There, there's always something, right? I don't know. Was she a major? There's probably she, a, an article uh, in the local news about. Was she signed to a major label yet? I don't think she was signed to a major label yet. But well, then maybe it didn't make national news. Dave, you're not listening to no. me. Uh, she, there's always going to be the one local to where she was, the local to where she lived. What year was this? Uh, 2008. There's also going to be follow up. Yeah. Was there, what was the cause after the, the investigation? Yeah, check the microfiche. Uh, 
no. There should be... Uh, you know what it reminds me of? Is that Edward James almost story. Almost story. He almost got away with it. He almost got away with it. There's only one article online right now, and it is so buried about his uh, kid touching because someone got in there and erased it. Someone took it from the internet. Someone took it from Wikipedia. But there is one story out there left, and he's disgusting. But no one knows it because it's been wiped from the internet. So I know because I've been on that story for fucking years. I believe when something gets totally erased on purpose, there's because there's merit. There's something there. So I am, I, I did Lady Gaga go and toss her off a roof? I don't know. Probably not. Did somebody who was thinking they were going to latch on to Lady Gaga and wanted this lady out of the way? Maybe. No. I don't put it past anybody, really. If it was all over the internet, if the if the news articles were... This is a Streisand effect. If the articles were there, if the Wikipedia was there, then perhaps I'd be like, oh, it's, it, it's an unfortunate accident. But since it's all been fucking wiped off, then that tells me somebody doesn't want us to know. Perhaps. It's possibly a uh, management figure. Someone like that, but I, I don't see why. I just don't see why they need would. I don't see why. Why would this need to happen? People kill other people for shitty reasons. Ah, huh? I don't see the reason. Mentally ill people kill people for any reason in their this head. It's not a crime of a mentally Dude, ill person. You don't know that. What if it was had it's nothing to what? do with Gaga though? Maybe somebody fell in love with her and and they would have found it. It would have been sloppy. There would have been edges that you don't. That doesn't know. Uh uh. Mm -mm. That would be found. How, that, she's not an A lister at this point. She is a on the rise star who might have come across somebody who f f misread signals or made up signals. I, this girl had everything to live for. She, her I music is great. She has a her. few albums. Well, I'm telling you. But you don't know. You don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know what was in her head. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. They won't let us know. Yeah. Why won't they let us know? Well, they won't let us know that either. Exactly. Because there's something there. I don't know what's there. That's All right. the thing. Let's move on. Yeah. I'm not against the idea. I just don't know. All right. That was the conspiracy. Next, we have either the unsolved mystery or the deep, dark secret. Deep, dark secret. All right. We are going back to crazydaysandnights.net for this deep, dark secret. It's called He Killed the Show, Old Hollywood. I am calling it Old Hollywood, but the subject of the blind is still alive. Very old, but alive. I always say the first rule of Hollywood is never leave a hit show. This actor-singer was one of the first to do it, and when he left, the show didn't have a chance and crashed and burned the next year. He will say he left the show because he was sick. Yes, sick from drinking too much, but that isn't the reason. The reason was that he knew that despite him being the second lead, he was the star of the show. People watched because of him. He wanted a raise that would have made him the highest paid actor of the time, whether in movies or television. The name of the show is also memorialized in song. Good times. The producers of the show thought he was bluffing. He wasn't. He thought they could be a hit without him. They were wrong. It limped through the one season without him. They tried to get him to come back during that final season, but he asked for even more money than before because he knew they were desperate. Not desperate enough to pay him his fee, though. So what happened to our actor? He never had another hit. He worked and worked, but no hits. Alan Alder. This is older Hollywood. Oh, Alan Alder. <laughs> no. No. You Alan might... Arkin. Older Alan. Okay. Uh, no, well, I don't even know what show Alan Arkin was on. See, he never had a show oh, after I that see. one. 
what was the show? Oh, I don't know. Catch-22? That is a movie. That's a movie, I think. All right. It was uh, John Ritter. It's not John Ritter. It was uh, Larry, his roommate, his old, friend. Old Hollywood. Oh, it was Don Knotts. It's black and white. Oh, hey, that's racist. Okay. How about uh, Cleavon Little? You are never going to guess this. Oh, it was uh, Carol O'Connor. Okay. Oh, uh, Meathead. All right. It's black and white again. (laughs) I'll just Uh, bring that up again. Lamont. All right. Damon Damon Williams. Okay. Damon Damon Williams? I'm I'm saying the show was... Devon Williams. Okay. The show was in black and white. Oh. uh, (laughs) The people were not black and white. Oh. Oh. Uh, Oh, like... uh, Indian show. F Troop. Uh, so your guess is Larry Storch, who is still very much alive. A Storch master. It is not Larry Storch. Larry, uh, I don't think Larry Storch left F Troop. I don't think you're going to get it. But I'm not going to get it. Okay. The answer is George Maharis. I don't know who that is. He's he, not a person. He, uh-huh. Uh, George Maharison. George Maharis. I like him. What did he do? He was in the show Route 66. He left the show and uh, because he wanted more money. They said no, and uh, the show failed. Yeah, they blackballed him. He had what they call an X on his name. Never to work again in Hollywood except as a sucker. Or did he work on shows that just sucked? Uh, after Maharis's departure, the show uh, the show's appeal declined. No other shows that he worked on. Yeah, no, he's worked on a shit ton of shows, but again, nothing. He never starred in a show. That's called the Maharis curse. It it could be called the Maharis curse. It really could, um, but he's been in a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of things. I don't know if I recognize him. Uh, well, we could watch Route 66, I think, on Shout TV, maybe. I think they might have yeah, it. Yeah, is this some sort of big con just to get a, a promo for them? No. It, no, it Wouldn't was, that be fun? It was not. He, uh, let me, hold on a second, let me go to this. Let's do the story about the guy who has bad underarms, and then we can tie it into right guard. What guy has bad underarms? I don't know, underarms? some guy, and, you know, go buy your right guard at Right Aid, and we got to double tie it. Why are they paying us for this? Okay, so he has, I don't know what you're talking about. He has 70 uh, acting credits. So prior to Route 66, he was in... uh, So wait a second. This is a deep, dark secret? This is a deep, dark secret. What's the secret? The secret... (laughs) The secret is that he killed the show. What? What? That's not a secret. It's a secret because you didn't know who it was. I've enlightened you now. But now the secret is out. It's George Maharis. Tall, dark, and handsome, not to mention a charismatic rebel of 60s Hollywood, actor George Maharis, real Greek family name is Maharis, was born in 1928 in Astoria, New York. Is he still alive? He is still alive. Well, good for him. Uh... Anyway, the other part of his uh, deep dark secret, and this might he was be a fagula. Okay, 
We don't have to use that word. Oh, but he was, right? Because I can see him in a picture. He looks awfully uh, femme. That's why I asked you not to look. Oh, I didn't mean to look at the picture. Was he in a bathroom? Was he in a, was he in a men's room with someone? You're looking at a picture. Oh, I'm looking away now. I just kind of... But you read... You just read... I saw something on a men's room. And I knew it wasn't like the lie. I thought for a second I thought it was a, like a gymnasium, locker room. But then I was like, oh no. I have to be honest. I have a feeling this was a setup. Was he with George Michael? Famous Hollywood actor George Meharris was arrested November 21st, 1967 and charged with committing a sex act with a hairdresser in the men's room of a gas station in Los Angeles. You know, that's pretty specific. Now, that's part of the crime. I f- hairdresser specifically bad. This is the this is the thing. I think this I think he was set up uh he was set up because of, uh, because of how he brought that show down, right? Uh, that's probable. They charged him with uh, they charged him with something big, so it could, would make the newspaper. Yeah. And in the end, when the damage was done, he just pleaded guilty to a count of disturbing the peace and was fined fifty dollars. And uh, but the damage was done at that point. This is the real interesting weird shit. So you mentioned George Michael, right? Yeah. So you know the show Arrested Development. Yeah. They had a character named George Michael. Okay. Those, Is that Will Forte? Uh, no. So, uh, I don't think so. Um, so, anyway, maybe. No. I mean, Will Arnett? Was it Will Arnett or David Cross? I don't know. I forget. Anyway, I don't know. But anyway, the guy that just George Maharis was found with. Yeah. His name was Perfecto Tellis. Come on. that's You're not born with that name. Let me just say this. Arrested no. Development also had a character named Perfecto Tellus. There is no way that it's not related. There's related no, to what? There's no way that they didn't name that character after another, uh, you know, weird old Hollywood story. Well, why, of course there's no way. That uh, That's clear. Isn't that strange? What is that? That's them. No, I don't well, know. Who is this person? He's more interesting than this guy. Perfecto Tellus. He was a hairdresser who was 33 at the time. Oh, with a name like Perfecto Tellus, I think you could do anything you want. He was booked on a sex perversion charge. <gasps> Maharis was. Oh. And Perfecto Tellus walked. No, Perfecto Tellus probably was also booked. Anyway, so this was the old Hollywood deep dark secret. It was a secret. It is no longer a secret. George Maharis still alive. Oh, Jesus, George. Please say it's not so. I think he he brought down Route 66. Let me ask you something. Okay. Is he really leading man material? He was quite a handsome man. He looks better there than in that other picture. Well, yeah. I don't even know if that other picture was really him, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's he's got that Robert Wagner look. That's right. He's quite handsome. Good. Okay, I give him a pass. And Robert Ulrich? Robert Vegas? Ulrich. Dantana? Yes, Dantana. He looks like him, too. He should have been Dantana. He should have been Dantana. That's the book I'm writing. He should have been Dantana. The George Maharis story. Well, there you go. I look forward to seeing that. And maybe it'll be serialized for television. Oh, a cartoon, I was thinking. Oh, all right. An animated uh, biography. Excellent. All right. So that leaves us with the unsolved mystery. Unless you have more to say uh, Uh, about George Maharis. I would say... Who... uh, What was his role on Route 66? I mean... He Why was, was he so powerful that he killed the show? Was he that was the like, second lead. Uh, let me ask you something. Who mm-hmm. was the lead on Happy Days? Who was the lead on Happy Days? Was it was it Richie? Or was it the Fonz? Or was it Mrs. C? Let's see. Happy Days. No, in your opinion. Oh, in my opinion? Yes. Without looking, I would say that Richie Cunningham was the lead. Fonzie uh-huh. became popular, I think, after the first or second season. Now, if you got rid of Fonzie, you uh-huh. might have killed the show. I bet they paid Fonzie. I bet if P- Fonzie asked for more money, look at right now they're saying. Let me tell you something. Henry Winkler was the lead. It was Arthur Fonzie, really, not Arthur Fagger, really. Uh, okay, I don't. I'm not. I don't. I'm saying he played by the rules. 
he couldn't set up the phones because he's a good moral person. Let me just say this. Ron Howard was only in 170 episodes yeah. of Happy Days, while Henry Winkler was in 255. How about Clint Howard? Clint Howard, I don't think, was in very many episodes, if any. Man, how do you do that? How do you do that to your own brother? Uh, is it is his father directing it? No, that was someone else. How is it that... I don't remember that Ron Howard left the show. I guess he did. He went off to college. With Chuck. Yes. So, yeah, if... I would say if Fonzie left the show, it wouldn't... I don't know if it would kill the show... Maybe it would. Maybe after the first couple seasons, if, if Fonzie left, maybe it would kill the show. All right. So, Three's Company, Jack Tripper was the lead of the show? I would say yes. So, all the ever people could have probably left except him. He could have probably left. I mean, Suzanne Summers left, right? Because yeah, of money. Because exactly. she thought she, she pulled a, she tried to pull a George Maharis, but they didn't allow it. And they went and uh, got on all. When have they ever allowed it? Who has ever pulled a George Maharis successfully? Which would be called not a George Maharis. Um, let's, I'm trying to think. Maybe George Maharis was the you know the one and only, because they never allowed it afterwards. Look what they still have. They they took Roseanne off her own show. They're still playing that piece of garbage and pretending that people want to see it only because they don't want her to win. Right. They would rather put money into a terrible show than have a win for Roseanne. So we know these people are sick and twisted yeah. so uh, I think George Maharis was the one and only I'm trying to think I can't think of uh, yeah. yeah he was I can't imagine he was there was any other one I mean if you, you, you John, uh, John Amos left good times but he never wanted to come back did he come back no he left because he thought the show was degrading. Well, he wasn't wrong. That's probably true. So that wasn't he was he didn't pull a George Maharis, but I think the show probably did suffer without him, right? But he wasn't the star of the show. He wasn't. JJ was the star of the show. JJ was the star of the show. I mean, people left Mash all the time, but it was such an ensemble cast. Yeah, but without Hawkeye, you got a problem there. Yeah. He never left. He really never left. Uh, He's right. still there now. God bless him. The Aldenator. All right. Um, so that leaves us with our unsolved mystery. Are you prepared for that? Yeah. You know what the best episodes of MASH were? Which when one? they'd go off in a jeep and get stuck off in a cave or something, just the two of them. You know, like uh, Alda, Alda and one other character. Then it would get deep. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, I'm trying to think if I have a favorite episode of MASH. Um, I can't think of a favorite, but I, that, that was a that was a pretty good show, I would say. All right. All right. What's next? Next, we have our unsolved mystery. All right. Let's try and solve it. The Rendlesham Forest incident. I'm not going to be able to solve it. No, you're de definitely not. I can't even pronounce it. Rendlesham. Yes. Rendlesham. Rendlesham. That sounds like Hansel Gretel nonsense. December 26, 1980, a U.S. Air Force security patrol told of seeing a mysterious unearthly visitor near their air base in England. During the next two nights, a rash of sightings astounded even the most skeptical military men. For years, these sightings were cloaked in secrecy until tonight. For the first time, former Air Force personnel go on camera to tell of a close encounter with what they believe were UFOs. Sense. It's also known as Britain's Roswell. Uh oh. It is undoubtedly one of the best documented and most significant military encounters with a craft of unknown origin or UFO. It is also a case that involved very credible witnesses, trained United States Air Force observers, and security police. The incident spanned three days in 1980. Jeepers. Rendlesham Forest is a large pine forest east of Ipswich in Suffolk, England. Nearby are the twin NATO air bases, RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge. At the time, both bases were being leased to the United States Air Force. Several UFO incidents, including multiple witness sightings by military personnel, 
ground traces, and radioactive anomalies were reported from Rendlesham Forest. All right. According to the United States Air Force security patrolman on duty, There was definitely something out in the woods. It seemed like to me like a massive light show. I'm thinking, who would come out in the middle of the woods outside an Air Force base and make a Christmas display? I was nervous. He was nervous. We didn't know what to expect, and we decided at that point in time we better get back and let somebody know what's going on in case something did happen. Burroughs notified his immediate superior from a nearby sentry post. Yeah, we got some kind of weird activity in the woods off the base. Hey, John. Yeah, sure, I can see him from here. It's still going on. Yeah, look, there's some kind of weird lights in the trees. I don't know, they're moving all up and down. Almost simultaneously, another security patrol arrived. They verified the presence of the odd lights. The object was described as being metallic in appearance and triangular in shape, approximately two to three meters across the base. It illuminated the entire forest with a white light and it had a pulsing red light on top and banks of blue lights underneath. In November 2002, the British Ministry of Defense released the Rendlesham file of documents related to and confirming the Rendlesham Forest incident. Here are some direct quotes. What I once believed is no more and what I've witnessed defies all that I have ever imagined. I am truly in awe over the whole incident and no one can fully understand the magnitude of such an event unless you were there. That was Sergeant James Penniston, interview with ABC Television in 2005. And uh, Sergeant Bud Steffens, who spotted the strange lights in 1980, said, it didn't crash, it landed. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of people who were willing to come out and talk about this incident. We were intrigued, but we were also very nervous. We didn't know what we were getting into. We started in on foot towards the lights. At the same time, we could hear the animals were very upset. You could hear a lot of ruckus. At that point, we got a radio transmission. They had just gotten in contact from Heathrow Tower in London that an object had been seen over our base and it had disappeared on radar. Is that it? I can't tell. All of a sudden, in the clearing, there was an object. It had a bank of blue lights on it, and it was sitting there like strobing. It was unbelievable. We all hit the ground, and it went up into the trees. Okay. On December 28th, the deputy base commander, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt, visited the site with several servicemen in the early hours they took radiation readings in the Triangle of Depressions and in the surrounding area. <clears throat> Although they recorded 0.07 milo rentgens per hour, in other regions they detected 0.03 to 0.04 per hour. I don't know what that means. It means that there was a heightened radiation in that one section of the forest. Okay. Furthermore, they detected a similar small burst over a half a mile away from the landing site. He recorded the events on a micro cassette recorder. There's a round abrasion on the tree about uh, three and a half, four inches in diameter. It looks like it might be old, but uh, strange as a crystalline pine sap has come out that fast. You see those other trees here that are damaged in similar fashion? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make it towards Saturday landing. Okay, why don't you take a picture of that and remember your picture, and you got to be writing this down. It's going to be on the tape. Right. got a tape measure with you. This is the picture. Your first picture will be at the first tree. This tape chronicles Halt's investigations in the forest in real time, including taking radiation readings, the sighting of the flashing lights between the trees, and the star-like, star-like objects that hovered and twinkled. Looking directly overhead, one can see an opening plus some freshly uh, broken pine branches on the ground underneath. Looks like someone came off about 15 to 20 feet up. Some small branches about an inch or less in diameter. Zero 148, we're hearing very strange sounds out of the farmer's barnyard animals. It's very, very active, making an awful lot of noise. Well, is there anyone who can uh, explain this? Everybody who explains it... Uh 
s says that it is what it is. Uh, this guy, Halt, Charles Halt, signed an affidavit, which is, you know, legally binding. It's, affidavits are, are considered testimony. So when you sign one, you're saying this is the truth as I know it. So it's a pretty small object. Uh, let's see, what is it? It's two to three meters across. So we're talking about eight to 10 feet and two meters high. So I think that's seven feet. So I guess it's like a triangle like this. Yeah. So it's not like a, it's, it's not like a, a, a plane. It must be some sort of individual craft. You know what I mean? Like one person in the craft. Or no, one you being. say there was anything in the craft. Oh, you think the craft could just have been some sort of autonomous thing? Uh-huh. Like some sort of bot that was sent down? Yeah, I mean, if we have drones, they could have drones. For, they could have drones 40 years ago. They could have drones a thousand, a years, thousand ago. years ago. A thousand years ago. I don't know what they got. Yep. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't understand if there's no... I, I don't know. Can't explain it. If there's no physical proof of it after it's gone. But it could... I don't know. I don't tell you. Later in the night, a red sun-like light was seen through the trees. It moved about and pulsed. At one point, it appeared to throw off glowing particles and then broke into five separate white objects and then disappeared. There it is again. Watch. Throw the head off my flashlight there, sir. Yeah, there it is. Hey, I see it too. What is it? We don't know, sir. So, yeah, can I get some room? Yeah, it's a strange, small red light. Looks to be out maybe a quarter to a half mile, maybe further out. I'm going to switch off. The light is gone now. It was approximately 120 degrees from yeah, the site. Yeah. Is it back again? Yes, sir. Oh, that's the flashlight set. Let's move out to the edge of the clearing so we can get a better look at it. See if you can get the star scope on it. The light's still there, and all the binary animals have gotten quiet now. Now, we're heading about 110 to 120 degrees from the site out through to the clearing now. Still getting a reading on the meter. About two clicks. Meter's jumped three to four clicks, getting stronger. Immediately thereafter, three star-like objects were noticed in the sky, two objects to the north and one to the south, all of which were about 10 degrees off the horizon. It's coming this way. It is definitely coming this way. Pieces of it are shooting off. There is no doubt about it. This is weird. To the left. Yeah, definitely moving off. Two, two lights. Two one right to the front, okay. one right to the left. Keep the flashlights off. There's something very, very strange. The objects moved rapidly in sharp angular movements and displayed red, green, and blue lights. The objects to the north appeared to be elliptical through an 8 to 12 power lens. They then turned to full circles. The objects to the north remained in the sky for an hour or more. The object to the south was visible for two or three hours and beamed down a stream of light from time to time. There was a very strange feeling in the air. It made your hair bristle. It was sort of like static electricity. You just had a very unusual feeling. And I don't think it was all psychological. I think there was something physiological about it. There was, there was something to it. I don't know what it was. We ventured on toward the coast, trying to decide what to do next. We looked to the north, and about 30 degrees off the horizon, there were three objects in the sky. They started moving rapidly about in sharp angular movements, as though they were exercising some type of uh, formation or search pattern. I'm not really sure what it was. We now have multiple sightings of up to three objects of a similar I think character. there was some type of guiding force behind these objects. Or whether it was trying to communicate with us, whether it was trying to warn us, or whether it was trying to do something to us, I don't know. To me, it looked like a grid search. Like they were boxing off an area and looking for something. And that was uh, the thought that hit me right away and has stayed with me over the years. It looked like a search pattern. Yeah, I just don't know what to tell you. How you can't solve it. Well, it's an unsolved mystery. I thought we were supposed to change that. 
No, you, I, I don't think we can change it. God damn it. I think it is what it is, but I, you know me, I definitely think shit is out there. What did the English government say about it? Suffolk police were called to the scene on the night of the initial sighting and again the following morning, but found nothing unusual. On the night of the initial incident, they reported that the only lights visible were from the Orford Lighthouse. They attributed the indentations in the ground to animals. The Suffolk uh, police file on the case was released in 2005 under the UK's Freedom of Information Act. It includes a letter dated uh, July 28, 1999, written by Inspector Mike Topless, who notes that one of the police constables who attended the scene on the first night returned to the site in daylight in case he had missed something. There was nothing to be seen, and he remains unconvinced that the occurrence was genuine. Well, let me tell you, I don't know. Do you believe in UFOs? Do you believe, do you believe in, in magic? I, be, I do believe in magic, and I also do believe in UFOs. And see, Uncle Uh, Maybe, yeah. All right, fair enough. Just don't let Gary Glitter say that. Uh, yes or no? Gary Glitter covers, you know, Love and Spoonful, we got a problem. I guess it depends on what he's covering it in. Um, uh, feces. Ew. Okay. I don't know. I never seen a UFO, so I don't know about that there. I would say that for... Uh, I mean, I've I seen things I can't explain, but i never seen what I could call uh, alien behavior. All right. Well, I, 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 I think for this Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt to put everything down in an affidavit... He believed it, that's for sure. And sign it. He believed it to be true. Yes. He was not lying. That's what I'm saying. But he, he might not have been correct. I see. All right. All right, well, then that's it. That is our last uh, segment of our Conspiracies, Unsolved Mysteries, and Deep Dark Secret, uh, episode 8. Trying to think if I got one for you. Well, I, okay. Throw at you. All right. Uh, uh, I guess I don't have one. <sighs> All or, right. Or do I? Do you? What is it? Uh, something about uh, rocket scientists in Pasadena. No, we already did we that. We did that one. All right, I got nothing. Oh, all right. All righty. Well, uh, this has been episode 100. Now, uh, we have a website. Oh, that what? reminds me of my new show. It's called Little Old Grady from Pasadena. Uh-huh. It's about this old black guy who drives around a sports car in the hills of Pasadena. I see. Uh, more like Altadena. Oh, that, uh... You know, because that's the rough part of town. It really is fairly rough. He parks his car outside of the check cashing store. He gets a lotto ticket, a bottle of wine, mm-hmm. and he's on. Okay. Uh, episode number 100. Now, we have uh, all of our episodes, our past episodes, are available on our website at macpodcast.com. We also have MacRadio.com, which is right now an internet radio station where we basically combined our music collections and have purchased some more music, and it's an eclectic mix. So you can head over to MacRadio.com and listen all day, every day, if you'd like. Um, Also, we have a... YouTube channel where Dave does reaction videos to different songs that mostly people suggest. Occasionally I'll put one in there that I find, but it's mostly from suggestions uh, of people on YouTube. And uh, people seem to really like Dave and his... Hi, how are you? And his reactions. Hi, my name's Dave. Uh Uh-huh. Can I help you? Uh Uh-huh. Anyway, what, so what shoe size are you? Okay, you can find you can find his reaction videos uh, on macpodcast.com. There's a link to all of them there. Um, 
Did you want to say anything else, Dave? I wanted to say there is a fine line between vilification and vilification. Don't vilify my villa lie. I now, see. if I lied to you about going on a villa, ca- villa vacation, uh-huh. would you try and vilify me with vilification? <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, I probably would. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The uh, fine line. I said vilification, not vilification, you moron. Okay. It's, you know, my new sitcom, uh-huh. The Angry Politician. I see. Excellent. I look forward to that. You uh, nincompoop. This is my, my catchphrase is, you boob. You boob. Oh, uh, you nincompoop. Okay. All right. You booby nincompoop. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that sounds weird. Uh, is this starring? Uh, starring Angelina Jolie and John Voight. I see. John Voight is the uh, assistant. Oh, okay. <laughs> and actually, it's called The Intern 2, uh, starring John Voight. Uh, I'm your intern. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't think he talks like that. Oh, well, he's going to in this one. Otherwise, we're going to get someone else. All right. Uh, I, I, I might have liked the little old Grady from Pasadena better. Oh, well, that, that is a dev- that's in development as we speak. I see. Well, I got a deal going. Excellent. No one's taking me up on it, but I got a deal. Make sure no one pushes you off the hotel roof. Whoa, I don't go to hotels. Steals your deal. If I'm on the roof, it's because I'm smoking a joint. All right, well, let's not... At which point, I'll probably burn them with it. Mm Mm-hmm, okay. One time I was on a roof, and I handed a man a lighter, and I had turned the lighter up all the way. This is when you can control the lighter like Mm -hmm. that. And he burned his sideburns off with the lighter. Me and Colin laughed. <laughs> and then he looked at me like, hey, man, why'd you hand me a lighter that was so lit up? And did you say, because I'm high as fuck? I said, oh, I didn't realize. Sorry, man. But his his uh, sideburns were still scorched. You're the reason that they make it so you can't adjust the flame size anymore. You. That's true. All right. All right. All right. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Uh, If you've listened to every one of our hundred episodes, uh, we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. All right. We will see you next time, America. Big it is.